maybe he couldn't be put together again because you're asking horses to do it. Why are you tasking... No, all the king's men. All the king's horses and all the king's men. Yeah, I mean, they, they probably shouldn't have asked the horses. That's what I'm saying. Brunch, hit it, boys. Okay, let's have the fight. Uh, cut the shit with the tweeting movie titles in all caps. This is a thing that people have been doing for years, going back years. I had a memory today that I'll get to in a second that shows how long this has been going on. And it has never made sense. This is not a style. It's not a. It's not an MLA, Chicago, a AP, New York Times style thing. It's just something that seemingly somebody did once and then the cool kids on the internet started doing it. And now a lot of people who I'm like, hey, I thought that you knew your way around the English language, but why did I necessarily think that? You don't, you don't have an English major that you can present to me. And now everybody does it. And now even smart people do it. And you, who does better with that stuff than you give yourself credit for, are doing it. And I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah, but like 98% of the reason that I'm doing it is because you voice your concern that you hate when people do it. I like that... <laughs> CNN does it. I like when we do it from CNN. Yeah, but... You, but you've been doing it on your own now. Yeah, and I started doing it on my own after you fucking started doing this. I think you're doing it to fit in with... Oh, oh it's so weird. Why does everybody do it? Why would... You tweet it in all caps. You, it's... I mean, I've definitely done it before, like as like a way to make it stand out, of, of, like with like the rest of the tweet, like, hey, this is what this tweet is about. But I mean, I get what you're saying that like it doesn't uh, that doesn't happen anywhere else. Like in sports, like they don't like hurricanes in all caps. They like, do, and they? this drives me crazy. They do this for uh, injury designations. People will tweet uh, out the Patriots have uh, listed Ramondre Stevenson as out <laughs> tomorrow. I'm like, oh man, good thing. I would have had no idea his status if it weren't in caps lock. It's Twitter. There's like 13 words. I'm not skipping any of them. I know, but now, but yeah, now I'm like really leaning into it and you're never going to get me to back off this now that I know that it bugs you so much. Like this is so old that I forgot until today. I, in a past life, maybe like seven years ago, had fits about this when I first started seeing it. And my pal Dan Kagan, who would sit next to me at Bruins games, would tweet about movies like that. And I would get on him for it. And I'd be like, dude, don't do it. Just because you saw, I don't even know who. Like, I don't know who I'm blaming for this. But just because you saw somebody else do it, that's not what it is. And like, you write for a newspaper. You know better than this. Don't do titles in all caps. You're, you're weirding me out. And then he really enjoyed doing it as a result of it and uh i i can't hear that because oh I you're not plugged my, in yeah sorry it was lubega okay so what i started Which doing that ah oh, okay yeah. spike didn't know that by the way what did you notice that no he uh cut a clip of the show and uh the uh the caption. text on the screen yeah the caption for that was some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he may know, but it also some bullshit is a funny caption for that. I mean, it is some bullshit. I think that Lou deserves a, a little <laughs> better. I mean, his his middle name is Lubega. You know that? I did know that. Uh, uh, did you know that he's from Germany? I did. But, okay. So Dan would do the all caps thing, and that drove me crazy. So back in those days, I would do this like monster, maybe Seinfeld 2000 inspired sort of speak on Twitter to mock Bruins fans who wanted everybody traded. And I, so I, I like in all caps, I would tweet like, Oh, Taka d didn't make save. Oh, which uh, cool. But I started doing that with the movie titles and I would do the wrong movie title. So I, and I would tweet like this, not caring that like eight people understood it. I would tweet like saw, a shape of water today. <laughs> it like was that. very good, but not as good as <laughs> call me by the name. <laughs> I like that. So a I lot. think I'm going to bring that bit. back. Do it with either that or do it with uh, like the SpongeBob's beak. 
the, uh, uh, the, the, the alternate little, the little hands thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, what I'll do is I'll just do the alternate. What you norm- <laughs> we know what you mean. <laughs> I, that's what it's called. Well, yeah. The like mocking SpongeBob. Yeah. What do you do? You're giving me a look like I'm like doing something dicey here. No, no. Go ahead. Uh, uh, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to do the alternating <laughs> thing. Like saw, uh, Triangle of sadness today, and it's <laughs> and it's the mocking SpongeBob thing. We should remake movie posters and do like either like the fucked up versions of the name, like the actual title, or do it in the SpongeBob title. I was also thinking of if you tweet something that is a movie title, you have to do it in all caps. So if you're like, oh, like uh, it. Yeah, you just have to capitalize. It, it. was really good. Uh, other than the you, late, I I, 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 I think flew I made, on a plane today. Other than the late arrival, it was a nice time. So I think early on when I did do like the the um, the all caps titles non ironically, I would do them when they like kind of blended in with a sentence rather than doing it in like parentheses because it just felt like too formal for Twitter. You could do what you actually do and use quotes. So I, even that felt like too formal. felt like weird to do that. So like we talk about like how your thing is like you don't like using periods at yeah, the end right, of tweets. Right. Like that was like my stylistic this is too formal for Twitter thing. And I do understand somebody could say it's a slippery slope for in your very complaint about this thing. I'm sure in my tweets complaining about this, there weren't periods at the end. Yes. That truly, I feel, just personally, can be argued as a stylistic thing where when tweeting, don't use periods at the end of the tweet. But but, but like now, I understand what you're saying that it's basically like become universal. Right, and that. somebody could say, well, this is the same thing. But it, then it becomes something like chomping at the bit where it's like it only became a thing because everybody, everybody was, was so stupid <laughs> that they didn't know this is actually a wrong thing. I am aware that you end sentences with periods. Yeah. I think most people doing the all caps thing are trying to sound like they're like uh, uh, Seppenwall does it, so I get to do it. Apologies to Alan Seppenwall if he doesn't do it. I don't like. I don't even know who to blame for this, but it's Seppenwall is allowed to do whatever he wants. He's the goat. Seppenwall is like a critic who's awesome. That that's an Im- impossible thing to be. Yes, a critic that everybody likes and respects. Yeah, uh, unless you're like your Ebert and Roper, which I don't even think both of them were like beloved and respect. I think like I don't know. I, they but, had their like, moments. But Seppenwall is like a somebody that's like oh shit Seppenwall liked it yeah that's like a, a real stamp of legitimacy i saw uh avatar uh, uh hold on avatar the shape of water yesterday at the movie theater that was you know that's a that's a three hour and 14 minute film you know this I did know this, and uh, I, 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 I was these, firing off these tweets. These damn movies are too long these days. Uh, I was checking emails. I was making personal calls. Oh, my God. I was doing my uh, grocery shop. I was using Peapod to get the <laughs> to get everything delivered. I, oh, man, I got all sorts of work done. Did, India. Uh, do you, what are your thoughts on uh, intermissions in movies? I could have used an intermission for that, and in fact, during this movie... I looked... We, we're going to do Avatar this week on the Patreon. I... Spoiler alert, I liked Avatar, The Shape of Ugh. Water. And in uh, while watching it, I did look up, is this movie streaming? Because I would love to clock out now and finish this movie later. It's not. Not right? streaming. Yeah, because James Cameron's a fucking dickhead. I had to stay. So I... I what a piece of shit. Stayed the whole time. What a real piece of shit, that guy. Hey. You, you, you make a movie and expect me not to piss or shit myself from the course of three hours, you're an asshole. I didn't go to the, this. is bad. I did not have to pee the whole time, which shows drink how dehydrated I've been. Dude, I've just been doing nothing but watching movies and eating popcorn. I I am legitimately Greg Turkington, for his character from On Cinema. I just always have popcorn with me now, and I'm drinking coffee to stay awake so I can watch all these movies and catch me in the theater or at home crushing movies. Thursday, I did... Uh, the Triangle of Sadness, mm-hmm. which is on the Patreon now. Yep. Spoiler alert. Both incredible. Love that movie. Uh, literally incredible. 
as in like how your honor is incredible. Where no, you're like, like unbelievable. I, I don't word. believe that this exists. Yes. Uh, you, we had a uh, we had an, we had a really good uh, your honor discourse this week. Do I, I'll let you finish your thought. No, 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 no. Patreon is buzzing. So okay. so talk about it. Speak uh, on it. I mean, your honor this week uh, we we kind of we went in because it was the craziest episode in the history of your honor, which is. An absurd thing to say because that is an absurd show that has set the bar outrageously high for just bizarre world shit. The craziest episode in the history of the series this past week, um, we went like an hour on the Patreon dissecting it. And after the fact, like we were just like so kind of buzzing on your honor that it carried over to Twitter and kind of had to have the conversation like, hey, is anybody watching this show? Because it just had like a fucking unbelievable uh absurd episode and nobody's talking about it and, yeah. and nobody's been really engaging with our uh, our bonus episodes doesn't mean we're going to stop doing them because we, we do didn't them put for a us. trap in them though to yes. say, say like if you're listening to this i know that we could just like look at plays but we're, we're old school uh people we, are listening yeah yeah people are listening they're just not engaging <laughs> yes exactly like, like they and we're like do you like hearing us talk about your honor a Definitely don't care because we're doing that no <laughs> right. matter what. That one is for us. Starting to figure out, though, that people don't want to be caught talking about Your Honor in public. And I get it. I get it that, like, it's one of those things. The way that I described it was Your Honor is a person that you know um, that you really like, but you want to kind of keep it a secret because they're a, a flawed, outrageous person. And you know that if you're you're caught being seen like friends with them in public, they're going to embarrass you. Yeah. You don't know what they're going to do. They're, but they're erratic and fucking crazy, something. but there are redeeming qualities to them. One of the takeaways from the discussion, though, about Your Honor is this show is wrapping up. They have said that there will be only two seasons. So what we're trying to do is generate something I like to call popular demand, because sometimes things come back due to popular demand uh there is no popular there demand is no for popular your honor demand. right now but we would love bruntouchables if you could just just demand it in uh in large quantities if, if there could be some sort of popular demand for your honor then maybe they'll feel pressure to continue it for a third season. The, I've begun The pressure searching. is very low right now because yeah. uh, somebody tweeted the ratings at us this week. Never mm. once thought to like look up the ratings. I, uh, not a rating Television guy. for like 10 years, I intentionally chose to never <laughs> learn what ratings are. Uh, somebody tweeted the ratings at us. The ratings are horrendous for your honor, which is not surprising because uh, when we had the discussion on Twitter, got at least a dozen responses saying, Holy shit, there's a season two of this show. Um, but you can support this podcast in one of two ways or both ways. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch or generate popular demand for season three of your honor. Yes, one we of the want. two. Hey, if, if you can't, if you don't want to part with the $5 a month, generate popular demand, please. I have been searching some keywords after your honor episodes, though, to real to see like, Come on, someone got someone saw that, right? Are Eugene Jones this? drawings. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. I searched uh, same because I was looking for a screenshot. There's like nothing. I searched "damn Eugene" <laughs> after the last episode. Yeah, and because you're gonna get like "damn Eugene," why did you make a choice that you made? Because that was one of my thoughts. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, if I'm firing off a tweet about your honor, famously, I save it for the Patreon. I'm tweeting "damn Eugene," or I'm tweeting damn so-and-so how could you do that to eugene and that's going to come up so Mm -hmm. damn eugene felt like a good catch-all and there were a bunch of like just straight up damn eugene (laughs) hashtag your honor tweets and i think i I was like should i target these people like yo we got a podcast that you want yo check out this video like if you're watching a season and a half I broke of your that honor down actually if you want to. <laughs> if you're watching a season and a half of your honor i know you got time to burn check out this podcast i was hanging with tommy giles last week and i he was i just i brought up your honor i was gonna say like somehow your honor <laughs> it came, came up, up. And it was like it didn't come up i brought up your honor and i was like because he watched season one and, and he, he watches he watches Yellowstone. Like this guy's got this guy's got a low a lo- bar for loyal boy. This, yeah, he's a loyal boy with a low bar for entertainment. And he was before us even because we'll we'll tolerate some stuff. We'll lean into like a show that's getting weird or bad or whatever. Yeah. He was sniffing out very quickly that Your Honor was doing the showtime thing yeah. of going off the rails, and he was like, This this isn't gonna make it to halfway through the season before it's off the rails. And he 
was very correct in that. So I, I knew he had watched season one. I was like, uh, have you been keeping up with your honor? And he was like, there's a season two of your honor. Yes. Not only is no, there a season, I won't be watching that. Not only is there a season two, but uh, halfway through the season that we, the season two that we weren't supposed to get, they are in, still introducing major plot points that could or could not go any place. And new characters played by gangster portraying legends. Yeah. Like when you think of movies and television, take your time. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, listeners, but. People who will play a gangster, you're probably coming up with Mark Margolis at some point. Late in the game, they're bringing in Mark Margolis to play Gina, who is the most homicidal, crazy person in the world. Her more homicidal and more crazy dad. I was going to say husband. <laughs> she's got to get you know how somewhere. Those backst- you know how that family works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. She, she's I mean, not getting it from hubby. It's very funny. We we uh, we tried our hand. This episode, by the way, for sure, we're, we're just doing your honor again. <laughs> oh, so yeah. take your time. <laughs> we uh, we decided to get into, uh, put a little more uh, um, elbow, on your head. elbow grease Pie. behind the thumbnails for the uh, your, your honor episode. Put some on your Once head. Once again, I can't hear this, but I know that it's happening. Let's put some on your head. It's <laughs> okay. Christopher Walken from Gigli. <laughs> okay. Um, you're talking to uh, slap your brain. Fuck, you threw me I can't even joke. hear it. And I'm, <laughs> it's throwing me off my <laughs> thought process. It. Yeah. Um, I put a little I'm bit. smiling too much. A little bit more effort behind the uh, thumbnail for teasing this, epi- this, uh, this bonus episode this past week. And you had like. Brian Cranston, you had Michael Stuhlbarg, you had Mark Margolis, you had a crazy fucking drawing that showed up in this this uh, episode. It was and by then, Eugene, and then there was uh, <laughs> then there was Chet Hanks, and like three responses were like, "Yo, is Chet Hanks at the show?" And I was like, "Yes." They were like, "I'm in." It's so funny that you can have a Cranston and Stuhlbarg going head to head in a fucking gauntlet, and people were like, "Yo." Chet Hayes, I am in. <laughs> Famously, I recently rewatched season one of uh, Your Honor. Which, by the way, threw me for such a loop. I felt so stupid watching uh, the last episode. I was like, are you kidding me? This late, they got a new Eugene? Because there's like a scene where like uh, Big Mo calls to Eugene and he answers. And I was like, what the hell is this voice? They got a new actor. They're replacing Eugene after all he did for this show? And then I was like, he was, he was a child. <laughs> yeah. And they showed him. I was like, it does look a lot like him. <laughs> I was like, oh, last, like the most recent episode I watched of Your Honor was they him as a little fake Eugene boy. with an older version. I was like, are you, re- did you watch Family Matters? No. Yeah, they, they last season of Family Matters, they swapped out one of the main characters. And I was like, how dare you? And it was because she left the show. But I was like, you are not doing this with you. Like, Lil Mo. Maybe, but I'll be pissed. Yeah, Eugene, you're not doing it with. <laughs> Who are the most? Let's let's rank these. Well, the, it would ha- they'd have to like they'd have to really go back and change a lot because they'd have to change all those drawings, those lifelike That's drawings that he like, did. <laughs> uh, he ends up uh, putting on being put on trial for like the attempt or the murder of Adam Desiato, <laughs> and they're like, Your Honor, clearly this drawing doesn't look that much <laughs> like my client and my client is unbelievable Dismissed. at drawing <laughs> they're like he is really good there's a lot of depth in that tombstone with his own name that he drew i'm a huge fan of what we just did here which was spending 10 minutes on how nobody is watching your honor and then spending the next 15 minutes going really in depth in your honor oh dude no no one has done more for your honor than people Blackburn and dave bean yeah that's why like it sucks that it's coming to an end because like, we should be at the season three premiere. Oh, my God. That would be the best. We would be, like, your honor ambassadors. Okay, here's what we need. We need, due to poor ratings, your honor does not get picked up by Showtime. Or it goes somewhere else, and it's... it's The, it's real, fl- the community thing where we, like, crowdfund? Exactly. It's floating around, or the Scrubs thing. I mean, Scrubs would just went to a different channel. Right. American Idol also. I looked up recently. I was like, is American Idol still happening? I got time. I might, I think I'm going to go out for American Idol. Uh, and it's still on. It's just bounced around channels. Where is it on now? I think it's on ABC. Okay. That's weird. That yeah. should be Fox. Yeah. Ah! You know what that is? <laughs> no. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about the uh, the, the, the the sound that yeah. they do. Yeah, the little stinger thing. They yeah. got the, yeah. uh, it's uh, one of these. Ah! It's Lube- what if Lubega went on? 
what a, Lou Bega goes on American Idol <laughs> auditions with you know the song Tricky Tricky by Lou Bega? No. I looked up the other day. Are there other Lou Bega songs? <laughs> Cuz I I may I'm a, uh, I'm a def- defender of people who are incorrectly labeled one hit wonders. Mhm. Sometimes like someone would be like, oh, this one hit wonder. And I'm like, nah, you just missed them. They really did come out with a bunch of songs. Mm-hmm. Lubega did have other songs. But if you have a song that's Mambo number five, no matter what, you're going to be remembered as a one hit wonder because nothing's going to touch the five. I did see like, um, oh, I saw uh, uh, our friend Lucy Burge posted a different Lubega song like on her story. What? Was yeah. it Tricky Tricky? I don't know. It was um, It was one with... It was an extremely horny song, She's which tricky, like tricky, somehow hornier da, than Mambo da, Number ba, Five, because she like posted the lyrics with it too, and it was just like very horny. Wow, I mean, Lou was thinking about like sixteen hundred girls at once, so I could <laughs> yeah. see him potentially suffering from horniness. Yeah, same. Male pattern suffering, horniness. Suffering from horniness is such a like like it's like a medical term. <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. suffers from horniness, male pa- male pattern horniness. I did that one one time. Uh, I was going out for a uh, I was going out for a driver's license. I was trying to get a, a driver's license, mm-hmm. and the uh, the guy that you, you take uh, when you get a driver's license, you gotta give it some someone a ride. They <laughs> they need a ride somewhere or something. You drive them around. It's the original Uber. Yes, exactly. And they don't pay you. And they sometimes they'll ask you questions, they'll chat your ear off, and like it's almost always about driving. This guy's mm. obsessed with driving. And but, they're very like demanding. They tell you what to do and shit. This guy They never was, ask. This guy was a penis's penis. Okay. He was the worst. And he <laughs> asked me at one point, he was like, uh, are you uh he was like, are you qualified to blah, blah? Do you have your learner's permit? Blah, like all these things. I'm like, yo, like I gave it to that person. They, I'm good. Like, did you think that I was going to show up here if without letting me be here? Do you think that I cut the line and skipped like four steps to getting my driver's license? Yeah. And he's like asking me stuff that's been filled out. And he's like, <laughs> he may have been like, what are you blind or something? He was, he was like, do you have like all of your uh, faculties and all these things? And he asked me these questions and he was like, Anything else I should know about? <laughs> what? Like it was a cop that was about to leave. And I said, I was a different person back then. I, just, I And that was just like a weird spot to be in. I remember I said, uh, I suffer from attention deficit disorder? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> like, is this what you're fishing for? I Because uh, I think he was legitimately like, hey, before we start, what the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> so I said, I suffer from attention deficit disorder. Okay. Which how real, did he respond to that? Real talk. Yeah, I suffer from attention deficit disorder. <laughs> okay, how did he respond to that? I think he was like, "All right, cool, pal." Not what I was asking. <laughs> he was like, "What? <laughs> uh, do you know how many times it took me to get my driver's license? How many? I want you to guess. Three. No, twice. Same. Yeah. Did you really? You failed the first one. Hand signals. Uh, no. I um I. I uh, like you know how when there there like just like becomes a third lane um halfway through a yeah. road I I went like a little too early mm. and I guess that I like kind of like crossed the the center line like a split second too early and he was like yeah he, he didn't say anything at the time that's the worst part he they said, know that they're going to fail said, you Blackburn that is not your boyfriend's dick <laughs> you know what that is no oh the whiplash uh horrible guy that uh yeah, we should that, cancel that Fletcher. Him. Yeah, we should cancel. Oh, that yo, we didn't have canceling. <laughs> I canceled that guy two seconds into that movie. I saw um, uh, a clip of Bill Maher today, in which he was like, "If we're doing this, then we should uh, might as well go back and cancel Jesus." And I was like, "Motherfucker, Jesus is famously like the most canceled man on the planet." Yeah, like everyone got together and they, they were like, like "No more definitely Jesus? canceling that guy." Yeah, and not only did they not allow him to work again, they killed him. Yeah. And then he worked again anyway. This cancel culture isn't real. <laughs> Ooh. What do the people say? Like whenever whenever like Louis C.K. uh like when puts he did out his a big special show. that he like funds himself and people are like, Oh yeah, oh yeah, cancel culture really exists, huh guys? <laughs> On Easter you should tweet like <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Cancel! Oh, that's they say. Cancel culture strikes again yeah. sarcastically. Yeah. When Jesus comes back every year, because he's gonna come back again, uh, I'd be like, "Oh, cancel culture strikes again." And I mean, we we celebrate him every year, even though he was canceled. You know what I did see? Oh, I I I went on. Uh, I went also on. the Louis C.K. thing makes me laugh because like 
literally canceled his they, show. Yeah, like he lost money. He he's he a, lost uh, he, his show was canceled. Yeah, like canceled. Yes, uh, L- the literal definition of can- being canceled. He's found his way and he's done other things. Right, but I mean that guy's life like was canceled. Yes. Not not to to death. I don't like the words. I don't like cancel and I don't like woke, which is a shame. I loved the word canceling woke back doesn't in the have day. to be a permanent thing. Yeah. Like that's that's I think that's what like people assume cancel culture to mean is like, oh, we've canceled that person, they're never coming back. Right. They you can come back. Like yeah. Jesus. Exactly. Uh I went on a podcast called Sunday Scaries, mm-hmm. and uh, the lovely host asks you about how you spend your Sundays, and I was dreading it because I was like, yo, in general, Sundays are the the way, the way I thought of dressing it up was it's the most personal day because- I think that's true. Assuming you don't have children, you don't owe Sunday to anybody. A damn thing. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the world is your oyster. If you mm. don't feel well- you nurse yourself and or you don't have to feel bad about doing nothing. Right. But I knew at some point there was going to be the, so what do you do on Sundays? And I was like, oh, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, and I said, I was like, I, I think that's a fine answer though. Yeah. Like yeah. Sundays, Sunday shapeshift. Yeah. I had some, uh, it, it, we had, we had a very good talk, but uh, in preparing for it, I was like, I bet I have no plans like ever on Sundays. So I looked on my calendar, uh, shout out Will DeFreeze. I'm uh, just tipping your entire podcast before it comes out. Um, Have we really only gone 26 minutes? Am I keeping you up? No, but I I feel like we've just been like buzzing for an hour at this point. It We, we have had a lot of energy. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm Could a, be the coffee, although this, this is kind of a placebo. I did decaf here. Did you decaf me? No, but that would be funny. That would be great if you decafed me. I didn't, but I wish that I did. Uh, met someone recently, by the way, who said their brother thunders them uh, because of our podcast. <laughs> and I was like, I totally forgot about that. Like six years later. That's yeah, the yeah. Best. Yeah. She was like, I can't. She was like, if I hear thunder, I want to kill like you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I bet that's uh, extremely fair and very well deserved. But uh, I looked on my phone because I'm, I'm a calendar guy and I checked. And I was like, the next three months do i have any commitments on sundays and i have two commitments on sundays the next three months on april 9th according to my phone it it is easter okay (laughs) and then on like on april 14th it's mother's day literally the only two dots on sundays i have for the foreseeable future are it's a holiday today (laughs) i like that though yeah but that's not really plans it's just like identifying the day The only times like the (laughs) what my phone needs to tell me anything is like while you're doing nothing it happens to be this day but i feel like a lot of people are like that i feel like you're typically not making plans on sundays and with the the not drinking thing i don't do the i i would i would do some sunday let's get together hey meet me i'm get i I would love doing the hey i'm gonna be here in 20 minutes Whenever you choose to arrive, you can come. And if you don't come, it's like, remember one time we were in New York, uh, you're uh, getting some beers with Feidelberg. We had to go. We had to head out. And he was like, all right, I'm going to hang here for like another 10 minutes, finish my beer or whatever. That's something that is a younger man. I would never do. Mm -hmm. But I love like getting to a bar early and having one, sitting around, scoping the place out, things like that. So I do lose that right now with the uh, drink- the drinking break. But yeah, I'm like not really going too many places or putting too much on my plate Sundays. It's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, I I, ne- I never really have Sunday plans. And when I do, it's a, like I dread it. So I like Sunday being like the free play square on like a bingo or whatever. Like just, it, well, I guess that is not a good com- comparison because uh, I guess I just like it as a free play square. I can do whatever I want with it. Yeah. It's it's my uh, it's my recess. It's Listen, my adult recess. Love it. Listen to it this Sunday on the Sunday Scaries podcast. If you don't follow the wildly popular Sunday Scaries Instagram, Instagram handle, account. it is incredible. And gotta shout out our bosses at Washed Media because their Instagram game has. Re- have you seen this? Uh, which uh, they I don't know. they have heavily pivoted their social media presence to. Like similar to the Sunday Scaries thing. Oh yeah, just which a like, lot of memes, slideshows mm-hmm. of memes, and I put immediately I put washed media 
with as good a meme follow as Camp Good Boy, which I have pushed on here a lot. I also follow Band Memes 666, which is really funny for some music memes. But other than that, I'm not doing a lot of meme accounts. And those boys kill me. When you uh, when you put together the Your Honor thing, there was a picture. There was a great picture of uh, Carmine Conti grabbing Jimmy by the throat. And mm-hmm. I was like, ooh. Send me that. Let's make a couple of memes out of it. Yeah, our Instagram is famously a wasteland. So uh, if you want to populate it, please help us. It is. Uh, we th- don't know what we're doing. With yeah, it. We, we truly would need to make a meeting and a plan with it. But I'm cool with it right now being a little barren because brunch is in a fantastic groove right now. Like as unemployment goes, mm. I feel like work is going great yeah, like, yeah i love how i spend my days and so, i like you and i are we're both like we're both like famously we we've not been great about like doing stuff outside of hitting record and talking for an hour yeah and i feel like now we're finally kind of filling in the outside gaps where you're doing crazy video editing shit and it's awesome like i'm organizing our like social channels and youtube and like doing thumbnails and we're all we're putting in more effort yeah is the 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 long story short there my uh therapist asked me recently um like do you feel like you've added anything since you left a full-time job and i was like yo this is gonna blow your mind harder now than i ever did (laughs) i mean no i mean god bless as I, i i obviously loved my job and i miss seeing tommy giles in work settings i obviously still see him outside of work settings he's never but been here i know it's that crazy out. and he he's like as he, he and vince mancini are as big of but bigger parts of the brunch universe that and, haven't dipped all the way in i mean i've never hung out with vince or like uh or talked to vince but every time i've hung out with tom giles it's essentially a brunch episode yes oh yeah for sure but i said i was like oh yeah like i was like i've taught myself to do stuff and me and pete are like coming up with more stuff. It's also a part of the year where we always feel good and productive mm-hmm. because it's Oscars stuff. But, but I was like, this has been going for a little bit. Now yeah. And we have Oscar like stuff. side project stuff that uh, we work on that, that we've worked on anyway. But I was like, truly like a month and a half ago, I'd be like brunch is a thing that I'm always going to do. And I'm always going to love it because it's like a, on top of everything else, it's just like a very unique part of a friendship that I have that I don't have with other friends. But uh, like if someone came to both of us right now and was like, you must turn brunch into a different or bigger and better thing. Like if we needed to, and we really need to like throw everything at it, like we could find ways to monetize it more than we had, which is something that probably we both didn't consider because we're like this is our side gig and yeah. we and, like doing it and I, there are there have been points in the past where you have explicitly been like i kind of don't want it to grow i kind of like where it where it's at i kind of like the comfort of where we're at right now i told my therapist today that uh i was vehemently against patreon in the beginning yeah and she was like wow so uh easiest how does that make you feel I've ever asked? And I was like, I, I explained why I was like, I, I know this was like a probably like lightly MAGA line of thinking where I'm like, no, we get our money from jobs. We take it from the bad guys. We take it. And I say bad guy. I was at EEI at the, the time. Lovely people. Uh, but like we take the money from corporate people. We don't take it from the good people. Yeah, like we don't tax our listeners. Yeah, yeah. right. And, and I mean, you, you your big reason too for the longest point is you don't want to lock any content out. And I, I totally understood that and I was behind that. But it didn't mean that we couldn't create more for the people that supported us a little bit more. A thousand percent. And credit to you for not like, you probably could have gotten, and maybe you were like privately mad about that, but that that could have just caused a rift, and that's why bands break up. Or I would whatever. have been, I would have been mad if we were like, listen, dude, like we're trying to fucking like do this and blow this out. Like I just quit my job. Yeah, right. I had a job that I was that was paying me well, so like I was all right, whatever. Like it's like you said, like if if we were if we have been doing this podcast for what like six seven years at this point, and we're like, fuck, this isn't growing. I'm, I'm yeah, fu- I'm fu- I'm ruined. 
Like it would be demoralizing. But at, like at the end of the day, we do this because it's fucking fun and we want to do it. And we're going to have these conversations anyway. <laughs> we may as well record them and just put them out there. Yeah, it's a stupid thing. And it's like this is going to come off as cocky, but it's also just drinking a lot of uh, caffeine and just looking at stuff and learning stuff stuff and picking up on what works and what doesn't work like if we needed to if we like went crazy on youtube i actually think that we could have like a real for real youtube presence and we have a good youtube presence now hope everybody goes there now and subscribes anyway but i'm like man if we if we had if all we did the time in the world YouTube. and did like and, and basically if we played the game our brunch mini episodes for the oscars which truly I would love if y'all were on Patreon and check those out. And there's a free Elvis one that we put out anyway. Yeah, uh, anybody can watch the Elvis one. It's on YouTube now. So go to our YouTube page. You want to get a taste of what we're doing with the Oscar stuff. Um, you can get that one taste with the, uh, with the Elvis one right now. Yeah. If we did those with everything, if which we'd need to either make this like, our real lives or stop doing real episodes, which I don't want to do. Like what I'm saying is if there was a Elvis episode for every topic we ever discussed, no doubt in my mind, it would get like a lot of traction on YouTube, not like millions of views or whatever, but enough that there would be a like semi legitimate YouTube presence. Yeah. Like if we were more hyper-focused is essentially what you're saying. Like in, in terms of like, like uh, delivering on a topic or whatever yeah you know, like we could have better search engine optimization and yeah shit like that and i'm describing having 900 hours in the day but i'm, I'm getting <laughs> yeah. ahead of myself in the meantime seriously get on that brunch youtube get on the uh, brunch patreon patreon.com slash listen to brunch so far we've got tar elvis all quiet on the western front and triangle of sadness out i loved triangle of sadness I uh, was quite mad at it, as we discuss in the video, so get on that. And that's just such an interesting one anyway, because it's star, it's lead, Charles B. Dean died IRL before the movie came out. So there's a lot to talk about. It's the longest so far of the mini episodes. We aim to keep them 10-ish. And this one's a few minutes longer, but I think fittingly so, because there's just a lot of meat on that bone. Mm -hmm. Watch that. At the very least, don't subscribe to the Patreon. Don't watch the video or whatever. Uh, like As human beings, watch that movie, because that shit is crazy. That's the your honor of movies. It, that, that, that movie is uh, is an, an incredible experience. That's what I'll say. Like I don't know if it's an incredible movie. Um um, front to back or whatever, but like it is an experience worth having and you will have plenty of discussions about it or want to hear us have a discussion about it. So watch the movie. Next week's episode, next week's regular episode will be a special episode. It will be Oscars previewee. We'll hit some of the categories that we don't have individual episodes for. And also this is a topic that I used to in the sports TV world mock relentlessly but i think is appropriate in this case i could get into a little snub talk a little snubs yeah i mean i i typically like like, like uh, uh, are there movies that you thought i would have liked to have seen it nominated in this category but they but it wasn't i'd have to look a little d bit deeper movies that research. maybe didn't get uh the love that you want them to get uh marcel snubbed. the shell with shoes on but that Oh, no, I'm not asking you for an answer. I'm okay. just uh, telling you what, well, like, what I answer. mean when I say I understand, a snub. I understand the word. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> the Mar Marcel the Shell with Shoes on is the, uh, the the one that jumps to the front of the line for me. That would what have a been, movie. That would have been as coined in a mini episode. That would have been Best Picture Chum, mm -hmm. but it still would have been really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to root for certain movies to be Best Picture Chum. I'm, yeah, right. It, it, give him its flowers. It doesn't have to win, but give him its flowers as a, as one of the best movies of the year. You know, it's a big one for me, and I don't think you've seen it yet, but I'm going to make you see it, but you're going to cry, and then you're going to be like, To Leslie. Oh, why'd you make me watch this? <laughs> yeah, man. I loved To Leslie, and apparently it was... It only has one nomination, uh, Best Actress, and people were mad that it was nominated for that, and I'm like, yo, that's all it was nominated for? It, it was fucking it, it, it's it's my uh red rocket of this year where it's like hey here's a snapshot 
of a person in shambles. Obviously, Red Rocket tries to be a lot funnier about it. To Leslie is about an alcoholic who wins the lottery and blows it all right away. And sounds is sounds lovely. Like it's so, oh man, the first half of the movie, you're just watching this person let people down and everyone's mad at them and she's pissed and everything. And I was just like, it, it, I knew that there was going to be a part of the movie where you're supposed to cry. And I was like, I'm just going to get a head start on this. This just makes me feel, this just hurts let's, me let's, so much. Let's lube up these tear ducts before we get to the good stuff. Oh, I was so ready. Yeah. And then the guardian angel played by Mark Marin comes in oh boy. and, Oh my God, what a picture. I loved it so much. So we'll talk about uh, things like that in the individual categories. My dude, I have been rifling through these movies. As I said, it's just popcorn, raisinets, yeah. cookie dough bites, coffee, Triangle of Sadness Friday. I think I actually, I did it Thursday and then I snuck in another one on Friday. Really liked it. I'm also squeezing in Your Honor. Uh, Friday night though, I'd gotten a text from a, a friend, Jeff mm-hmm. Israel, okay. and he says, want to see this was earlier in the week actually he said hey on friday would you like to see a movie that doesn't really matter and i said boy would i whatever that means yes and he was like sweet like let's go grab an app or something and then see whatever's in theaters and i started to look up damn a a blind theater i've never done a blind theater trip i oh no we didn't do that that would have been irresponsible because we would gotten bad seats uh it would be cool to just show up and no, say, on a Friday night. Yeah, you get bad seats. What's but like, starting, go, sir? Yeah, like that's that's something that doesn't happen anymore. I know we could do it. Like in like on a weekday, we could. Dude, just, we know too much, but like we could do it. Yeah, like we would know. Like, yeah. all right, no, nah, that won't be showing at five. There's also there's also a chance we show up and be like, oh fuck, we've seen all the shit. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I mean, when I was younger, we do that with baseball games. What? Which just like I intend to do this year. Why just show up to the stadium and be like, is there a game today? <laughs> I mean, this season you abs- you actually will be able to do that with Red Sox games. Probably. But in like the mid nineties, be like, hey, would you look at that? There is nice weather. Gang, I've got thirteen dollars. The whole family's going to a baseball game. I mean, that last part you can't replicate now, but do you can st- you I mean, still can do that. Uh, we did that with a Shohei Otani game. Like that was fourteen dollars. That was also two o'clock on like a Thursday. The Even travel better. days are the best, man. But yeah, you can still do that with like Sox games now being like, that's pretty nice. Though. You want to just do the Red Sox? I'm going to do a lot of Red Sox games yeah. this year. And I know you said Don't that say last 30. year. Don't you say You didn't 30. do as many as you said. I did 20. I did about as many as I thought I would, which was like five or six. Outrageously high number. I did 20, dude. For those stinkers? Yeah, 20s. It was fucking miserable at the end. 20s I did. I did some of them by myself, too. Like, uh, as, as much as I like doing shit by myself, like, baseball game's a little weird. I did a baseball game by myself uh, in maybe 2005, 2006, probably 2005. Uh, my dad won the lottery for uh, monster seats, but he only won the opportunity to buy one Damn. and he was like what am i gonna do with this and i was like more like what am i gonna do with this and he was like you're a child you want me to like drop you off at fenway and i was like before the game ideally let's do it <laughs> step on it pops and it was great i went and, like, i'm happy for you manny ramirez was playing left field he actually uh was dicking around the whole game that sounds like manny ramirez Great. I mean, it's an obstructed view seat, famously. Shout out Steve Buckley for calling that out right away when they were making like a big deal. Like, you can now send the monster. Buck put out a column like, hey. Uh, so you don't want to see checked left it field? Out. These are bad seats. <laughs> yeah. Don't spend money on them. They're really, really bad. And everybody got mad at him. But uh, so Jeff was like, yeah, let's grab an app, see a movie. And we both agreed pretty quickly. We were like, most likely it's going to be uh, Quantumania, right? Okay. So I said, can it be Super Lux? Boys doing the Lux. If you're going to do it, you may as well do that. He was ecstatic. Okay. Hell yeah. And that's what we did. We went, we got, uh, we ate some tacos. We got, I believe he got a cocktail. I got a, uh, I got a non-alcoholic Heineken. Mm-hmm. Which I saw people make fun of that stuff. Heineken Zero or something. Yeah, whatever I, it's called. I a uh, friend of the podcast, Andy Hart, said it's called Heineken Zero for uh, how many people 
uh, want to drink Heineken for the taste. It's <laughs> a good joke. Not bad. But if you're doing, I'll tell you what, like the non-alcoholic beer thing, I like because if you're doing not, if you're not drinking, you're not going to be reaching for a non-alcoholic beer all the time anyway Mm -hmm. so it's very rare that you have one and a non-alcoholic beer obviously they make them now taste just like it it's a pretty good feeling it's a nice time so we did that went to see quantum mania uh i had a stomach ache by the end of the night by the way spoiler okay because i was doing popcorn i got a coke there uh actually that this uh, woman behind the counter uh, when I got it, asked, is Pepsi okay? <laughs> Just kidding. It was super luxe. They delivered it to my seat. And uh, I also got Raisinets to the Paul Reiser thing. Uh, but Quantum Mania, yeah. I'm famously not a Marvel guy. Mm-hmm. People are making fun of it. They're yeah, saying it's terrible you you and everything. About it. I had a great time. Was it? Did you have a great time? Or was it because of the experience or was it because of the movie? It was just great hanging out with Jeff. Okay. So that's uh, not a movie review. And. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put in the, uh, I'm going to do all the graphics that we do for the best picture things. Yeah. And it's going to be Quantumania movie review. It's going to be me telling you that big story. And then you say, was it a great time because of the movie? And you're saying, I had a great time hanging out with Jeff. <laughs> uh, no, the movie, uh, the movie wasn't so bad. I mean, uh, as Jeff said going in, he was like, I don't have the highest expectations, but Jonathan Majors, Paul Rudd. I don't know. Let's let them cook for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they're both great. Catherine Newton's a star. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, Bill Murray. Bill Murray's Pretty in it? Crazy cast. Yes. Okay. But let me tell you, Pete, you want to know who steals the show? Who? There's an American actor named Corey Stoll. You don't know who he is. I do know who that is. I, okay. Uh, sure. I do. Uh, I know. <laughs> the bald guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I did expect you to know who, okay. who he was. But he is... I've seen the first Ant-Man, mm-hmm. and he's the bad guy in that. Okay. And he comes back as, like, a murder machine. He's, like, engineered to be the scariest, meanest killing machine. And he looks ridiculous. <laughs> like, very intentionally ridiculous. They Like, Humpty Dumpty, if he was, like, quite ill... <laughs> And he's got, like, these, like, little feet. He's just this, like, huge head with, like, a helmet, itty-bitty feet. And I'm seeing now that there's a clip going viral of it because somebody tweeted it out, like, this cannot actually be a real movie. And people who haven't seen it are like, it's so stupid. Every time they show that fucking guy, a smile was, like, lasered, locked <laughs> onto my face. I had lock job. I love that for you. Oh, no. Jeff was the same. And and the the whole audience, every time we were like, he looks so funny. (laughs) And then you would come and be like, that's right. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) He looked so stupid. But the movie knew what it was doing. It was doing some, um, what's my guy's name? Like Deadpool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like breaking the, the fourth Stuff wall. Stuff like, of shit. hey, like, how stupid is this thing? They weren't breaking the fourth wall, but it was, they were very much in wink, on the wink. joke. Yeah. Yeah, nudge and a wink. Uh, I did see a clip recently that, that uh, I, I, I don't know if it was a clip or if it was somebody like tweeting or something. It was just like, hey, uh, at what point did we decide that Humpty Dumpty was an egg? Because there's nothing in the Humpty Dumpty, like, uh, ooh, the, nothing in the, uh, what, do they, what do they call it? Fairy tale? Oh, uh, I had, uh, oh, I had a Humpty Dumpty take recently, well, but it wasn't this. It, it's, it's somebody said like it, nowhere is it explicitly said that Humpty Dumpty is an egg. Oh, it's like Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall. Yeah, no, I'm, but I'm trying to think. I don't know if I thought Humpty Dumpty was an egg. Really? Is there talk of him being an egg? The, the, he's famously an egg. There's a really he's, he's famously portrayed as an egg. So there's give him a, an old Google. I mean, I know what he looks like. He and he does look like an egg. Yeah. And, and like an egg, apart. he broke, but, but I don't like, know. I don't remember seeing like yolk spill out when he f- falls off the wall. I mean, I'm certain. I, I I know my Dumpty. I don't. I'm certain he's not an egg. I've never heard of anybody trying to put an egg back together either. So never once have I dropped an egg and been like, oh shit, I gotta fix this. That was my recent Humpty Dumpty uh, explan- uh Humpty Dumpty uh, observation. Maybe he couldn't be put together again because you're asking horses to do it why are you tasking 
No, all the king's men. All the king's horses and all the king's men. Yeah, I mean, the, they probably shouldn't have asked the horses. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't well, just no horses, No shit though. you couldn't be put back wasn't together again. You're asking the horses. horses to do it. It wasn't exclusively horses. They were asking them to lend a hand. They a lead Sorry. with the horses. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Mm-hmm. I do like that they gave him like a little nickname at the end. What was the nickname at the end? Where they're like, oh, we call him Humpty for short. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. It's, I sit on walls sometimes. Yeah, I definitely sit on walls sometimes. I had a banger the other day. I was doing a uh, radio hit. It's when uh, the, the speakers sound a little fuzzy and you hit the top of it and then <laughs> comes in clear. And uh, they said, so uh, follow him on Twitter. It's uh, DJ underscore Bean, correct? And I said, uh, it's actually an uppercase I. It's just lying down. Right? Like an uppercase I. It's not an underscore. It's a... And uh, that was received well, and I so I said, actually, you know what? It's planking. <laughs> All right, that's better. That yeah, I mean, better. if I just said, like, <laughs> what's an underscore? It's an I, and it's planking, <laughs> that's you noob. I you look to, paw. It, it took me far too long to understand what the hell you were trying to get at. <laughs> really? Yeah. The I think the I planking would have got me, got me a little there a little bit quicker. Have you ever seen I, Tanya? Mm, no. You never I saw I, I, Tanya? I didn't see it, no. Allison Janey? Is yeah. that who's in it? Yeah. Boy, what a picture. Yeah, we got nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. I saw, did you, were we not doing we're, it that we year? We weren't doing them. Yeah, we started, I believe, the year after. I only have one more movie? Two more movies? I have one. No, I, no, I mean for everything. the shebang. Yeah. For everything, everywhere, all at once. I got to see... Uh, I finally saw Wakanda Forever, saw To Leslie. My final remaining one, I saw Living uh, with Bill Nye. Mm-hmm. I heard you didn't like that one. Well, it was fine, but it's just like a lot of like, oh, Mr. Williams, you're getting very old. Well, the thing is, Mrs. What was Mrs. His, uh, his Love Actually song? Love is everywhere. Something oh, like yeah. Uh, uh, Christmas uh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh but he, just a lot of, well, well, I suppose I would be back if you think. But the thing is, I'm, I'm, I've, I've not long to live. And, you know, I, Mrs. Mrs. Williams, would you come here? Sure, but Mr. Williams, you haven't been to work. Oh, well, you see the thing, Mr. Williams. There's a lot of that. It sucks. A lot of people calling each other. <laughs> no, like, I, I actually like that part. Like, a lot of people just, like, calling each other by Mr. Whatever. Okay. I'm like, hi, Mr. Blackburn, Mr. Bean. Okay. Well, I was at Mr. Blackburn, so I just doing a lot of that. They do quite a bit of that, but Not it's, a, big fan. it's a bit of a bore. They do. He, he calls everything a bore, which I like. I'm, I'm he says, I have some news. And it's a bit of a bore, really. And he's telling people that he's dying. And I'm like, yo, that is literally exciting news. It's and burying the lead. Not like fun news, but it is like this will excite the this will get something out of this person. Yeah, for sure. But it's a lot of grumbling like they, a lot of they, they just everybody sounds so tired. Well, I'm tired because uh, I have to see. Stupid fucking Avatar movie. The last one that I have to see for Best Picture. It ain't bad, man. I have to see. Uh, have you seen Women Talking? Uh shit. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that one either. I have to see Women Talking. Two more. I have to see Women Talking, and then to complete, uh, I believe, Causeway. I have to see Causeway. Okay. Yeah, that's the only, and then then I'm done. So, and then I'm gonna continue to watch. Then I'm gonna watch like every bad movie that comes out. But I'm co- very excited for that. Cocaine Bear is coming out, though. The uh, the old uh, post-Oscars like palette reset is the best. Oh, man. It's like, hey, you've been watching a lot of good movies, and you've been spoiling yourself recently. How about some absolute shit? <laughs> but, I don't know, last like 10 years, you've gotten Get Out in the first month, and you've gotten Everything Everywhere all at once in the first month. So now, I'm almost like, all right. People are really like cornering the market. Like, Where's my... Uh, Where's my mid-March gold, please? Yeah. Give me the best movie I've ever seen, dorks. <laughs> hey, patreon.com slash listen to brunch because we are we're doing crazy things on there. And they look so good if you watch it on the YouTube, but you do have to be a Patreon member in order to watch on YouTube. But the graphics and the text and everything flowing, the the, the full screen graphics, they they just all it all looks so very, very nice. 
and stay stay subscribed because I am about to spend like a shitload of money uh, doing our set all sexy we're spending and, money that we don't have it's uh, always a good you got to spend it to make it i just spent so much money on on, on uh the cameras and the set that we're building out it's going to be amazing please uh stay subscribed subscribe if you're not and prepare to have your eyeballs really tickled because it's going to look great pete wrote himself an iou from pete on behalf of the brunch account to himself <laughs> and now he'll have only the. Now he's just gonna like resent the brunch account. Gonna I'm gonna like, have to break my own legs to get my money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So please, for Pete's legs, he doesn't have very much of them. <laughs> Patreon.com/slash/listen to brunch.